What's up everybody? It's Justin. <laughs> Happy Tuesday AMA day. Weird, right? We're doing an AMA on Tuesday because this is the 4th of July special. 4th of July special. Clovis, ask me anything, number 26. First things first, I'm in the house again, so I gotta double check this. I got the screens up. The screens were not cooperating with me today, so I'm nervous about this, as always. I'm gonna hit the refresh button. I'm gonna make sure that I can see myself here, okay? I'm gonna see if this program is gonna work at all for me. Right now, it's not. So I got no way. I'm flying blind. All right. So, this is unfortunate. I think what I'm gonna have to do is, um, I might have to restart my computer. So, that means I'm gonna do an intro while we restart. And I'm gonna hope, I'm gonna double check that this is live. Let me just check real quick, okay? Just tell me it's live. Okay, just tell me it's live. Tell me we got viewers. So I'm gonna restart my computer real quick. I can edit all this out in the podcast anyway. This is live, ask me anything, number 26. I'm calling it the 4th of July special. How to celebrate Clovis style. That's the MacBook booting up. Let's pray for the best. I hope this works. The split screen thing is being really tricky and my apps weren't functioning properly. So I'm hoping a restart fixes it. But today we're gonna talk about a lot of stuff. This one's gonna be super low key and kind of mellow anyway. I've been telling you guys that all week. Um, it's a Tuesday night one. I had a busy day today. I met up with my cousin who was in town. He's in touring band, touring musician. We ended up catching up for like three hours. So I really didn't do much prep for this one because during the summertime here in Nashville, my whole family lives here now. And they didn't know it. So, you know, I lived uh, away from my family for like 10 plus years. And now my whole family's here in Nashville. My mom lives on the same street as me. She's got a pool. We have cookouts all the time. We just walk back and forth between each other's houses. It's amazing. So I'm constantly outdoors, constantly having cookouts. We do a family dinner every Sunday. If you guys are in the academy or any of the groups, you know that we do this family dinner. My dad makes these amazing meals. So we've been navigating this space as a quote unquote paleo family for quite some time. And uh, it's actually much, much easier than you think. And that's why tonight's AMA is gonna be, I think really eye-opening for you guys, just how easy this stuff is, and all the little tips and tricks and nuances. So uh, a couple things, really, really cool news. The Clovis Academy has almost 1,000 members. That is crazy. I can't believe it, literally almost 1,000 members. I think we're like 20 people off from 1,000, which is nuts. Um, I did a bunch of work on the store. I said this in the Clovis Academy, in the live, in the groups today about how I launched a new loyalty program. So if you've ordered from the store before, you're gonna get nailed with a bunch of points. You're just gonna get a whole bunch of points because I had an old loyalty program, wasn't working all that well. So I transferred you over to a new loyalty program that I'm calling Clovis Coin, and you probably got like double your points. You probably have like $13 in free money in the Clovis store sitting in your account. So that's a little uh, catch up on what's happening with Clovis. Clovis Kids is awesome, I Am Clovis is awesome. We're getting new members into I Am Clovis every single day. That's the paid platform with the custom nutrition plans. It's going really, really well. Getting amazing results with people. All right, the computer is up and running. It appears to be cooperating. So let me go to the Facebook page. Please, 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 so I can see myself. It says that I'm live right now. Okay, let's check. Awesome, this is great. We're live, AMA number 26. 4th of July special. Cool. I got your comments here. Let's do this thing. What's up, everybody? Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, I got you pulled up. So, um, I'm going to give you a little example of some of the things we're going to talk about. Oh, now my computer wants to do updates while I'm chatting with you. Come on now. Crazy. So, how to celebrate Clovis style. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about cooking methods, which is really, really important because obviously there's going to be a lot of grilling happening tomorrow. So, we're going to go over cooking methods and how to mitigate the risks of grilling, which can be a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna tell you about that. I'll give you my favorite snack options, even a couple of dessert options. Um, I make homemade ice cream, all these different things, right? I'll give you my take on sunscreen. And I'm gonna give you a little hint and a little disclaimer about this part. The mamas get real mad on me for my take on sunscreen. It's awful, don't use it, don't ever use it, ever. Right, not ever, ever, there are extreme circumstances, but you'll get my take on sunscreen, I'll tell you how to navigate that in a very logical way. Um, I will share some of my favorite alcohol products, and these are meant to replace all that American-made Budweiser, Bud Heavy, Bud Light, all them things, right? I'm gonna replace all that nonsense because it's just about as bad as any beverage can possibly get for you. Two things that I miss, pizza and beer. Two of the worst foods on planet Earth. Like, there's nothing better than a Sam Adams Oktoberfest while watching football, but I don't do it anymore. It's not worth it, right? 
sacrifices must be made, okay? Um, I will also share how to mix foods and just kind of mix stuff. And we'll talk about recipes. Some of you know my take on recipes, so that'll be pretty quick. And also a special hack that I use to mitigate the damage of holidays. Now what I mean by that is a hack that I use to mitigate carbohydrate overload, which is just going to happen. We'll explain why it's gonna happen, how it's gonna happen. Um, let me check something real quick. I need to hunt down, there it is. I have a marker, don't worry, just in case. I don't know how much I'll use this. I might put some brand names up here. Um, I might, when I'm talking about mitigating the health risks of drinking booze, I might put some things up here. So that's gonna be interesting. That'll be a cool little topic that we'll talk about. So let's jump in. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I gotta do this part for the podcast, everybody. My name is Justin Nault. I am a certified nutritional therapist. I am a specialist in sports nutrition. I am the founder of Clovis, and I invented the line of products called the Perfect Paleo Powder, a line of nutritional products for all your healthcare needs. And I now specialize in the art of transformation. I transform people's lives. We talk about results all the time, uh, non-scale victories, clothes fitting different, clearing up skin conditions, having complete you're not allowed to say reversals. It's not allowed, but type two diabetes symptoms being changed drastically, significantly impacted, losing 50 pounds in eight weeks, losing 40 pounds in 60 days, etc., etc., etc. So I transform lives. That's what I do. I've done it for hundreds of people. Want to do it for you? This is one of those ways. Just a nice little easy one for the holiday. This was going to be a little bit low key. So I want you to ask me questions. All right. So as we're going. Ask me questions, talk to me about what you want to talk about. If I start talking about a recipe or something and you have something you want to throw in, like, hey, everybody, I have this recipe or this link. You have a link to something, share, 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 okay? Let me know. I want this to be, like, really interactive. I'll probably do 20, 30 minutes of prepared stuff, and then we'll jump into you guys and what you guys want to talk about. So let's see. We've got a couple questions. Not questions. we got some comments. Jackie's here. Tiffany's here. Caller's here. Write something on the board. What, to test if I, if I got this right? You wouldn't even know if that was backwards. Ha ha ha, see what I did there? I think I got the camera set up right this time. Pretty sure, I think I learned my lesson. Um, what's up, Julie? Julie's here, Casey, Lori, hi Lori. Hi Jessica, Jackie, all right, cool. Awesome, we got some people, this is gonna be great. All right, let's get moving on, 4th of July special, how to hack the holidays. Guys, how am I gonna erase this? I'm not prepared today, I'm gonna be, I might be finger erasing. Let me see, hold on, I'm gonna grab something to erase this. Ah, I'm back, don't worry, I didn't go anywhere. I just had to get this to erase this board in case I write stuff. So, first things first, let's talk about how to celebrate Clovis style, cooking methods. I want to talk to you about, it's fun to write stuff, talk to you about your grill, right? So everybody's gonna be grilling food tomorrow. Awesome, but it's about the worst way you can cook and consume meat. And that's really unfortunate because I love my grill and I love grilling things. So I'm gonna teach you some tips and tricks to make this less bad for you. Now, the key to why this happens is something called HCAs. We're just gonna call them HCAs because they're called heterocyclic amines. Uh, 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 amines, amines, heterocyclic amines, amines, amines. There's a million ways you can say it, but basically heterocyclic amines is what most people call these. They're called HCAs. And these are known carcinogens. So carcinogens are cancer-causing agents. Um, and you can create these in meat through the act of char grilling or blackening, right? So sometimes you'll go to a restaurant and you, you might even see like char grilled salmon or blackened salmon or things like that, right? This, this is literally creating HCAs in the meat. Now these are known cancer-causing agents. That said, it's not as big and scary as it sounds, especially if you're on something like the Clovis Protocol. So if you're living pretty low carb, um, you're, you're really not gonna have a big issue with this. Like cancer feeds on glucose, right? So there's not a ton of glucose in the diet. This isn't a huge, huge problem, but you still wanna get rid of these things. There's no reason to ingest these if you don't have to, right? So actually I'm borrowing some of this from my buddy Abel James. Abel James is the fat burning man. He's got an amazing podcast. Uh, I believe it's just the, the, I think it's the Fat Burning Bam podcast. He was on ABC's show, My Diet Is Better Than Yours. Abel, all around badass, great guy. And uh, he had some great tips for grilling. And there's five steps that he walks you through. So we're gonna go through those right now. So number one is turn down the heat, okay? So let's, uh, let's write up here. So for HCAs, number one is turn down the heat. There's no reason to light your meat on fire, right? So heat. 
doesn't have to look like a Burger King commercial where you're flame broiling, lighting all of your meat on fire, right? That's the quickest way to create HCAs. So you're gonna wanna turn down the heat, do not blacken. Now, you have a couple of options for preparing the meat. Now, number one is marinate. You wanna marinate the meat ahead of cooking it. Now, I also recommend that part of that marinade be a uh, cold-pressed extra virgin olive oil. So olive oil really, really helps to mitigate some of this HCE issue, uh, HCA issues. This marker's not working very well. I'm really sorry about that. Um, I might have another one somewhere, but I don't know exactly how to get to it. Uh, we'll see. I might have to replace this marker at some point. Um, but yeah, so number two, you wanna marinate your meat. Even if you didn't marinate it, when you before you go to cook it, just coat it in a layer of olive oil. That's really gonna help things, okay? Marinating your meat and having, a, and having olive oil on it can actually reduce the HCA count by 95%. So this, this one thing alone can handle that problem up to, 90, up to 95% lower HCA content in the meat. So that's fantastic. Like I said, this stuff is not that big and scary. Do not overcook. I like the idea of using a thermometer. When I use a slow cooker or I do a roast or anything like that, I'm always using a thermometer. I have a meat thermometer that has an alarm on it so you can set the uh, temperature, what I tend to do is set that temperature, you know, maybe 10 degrees less, especially if it's something like a roast, where once it's about 10 degrees less, you can either take it out of the heat or you can keep it covered and sit it on the oven or something and it will continue to cook itself. You can get perfect medium rare, medium, whatever you're looking for, right? So using a thermometer is really, really great, but do not overcook. And there's a weird statistic about overcooking where they say with this HCA thing is um, do not overcook. They say that for every one degree you go over the like the well done cooking temperature, the risk of cancer increases, which is really kind of a bummer, right? It sucks. It sucks that you have to think about these things when you're doing things like grilling food. Um, so the other thing is a better option for grilling if you want to grill is veggies. So veggies are awesome on the grill. Sometimes I put them in aluminum foil, I'll wrap them in aluminum foil with some olive oil, with some herbs and seasonings, with some spices. Really, really get those veggies on the grill or put them right in the grill. You can even blacken and you can char grill veggies if you want to because veggies do not create HCAs on the grill. This is just an issue with meat, okay? So you can even grill fruit. You can throw pineapple on the grill and you don't have to worry about HCAs, okay? So remember that, grill those, a better option for the meats is to put them in the oven or put them in a slow cooker or something like that. So number five is, or this list is clean. You wanna clean the grill before you use it every time. So even if you cleaned it after your last use, before you use it, clean it again. Just try to get that blackened nonsense off of the grill so you don't have to worry about this HCA thing because they can sit there, they can reside there and get on the meat once you cook it. So aside from this, this is all about grilling, right? The best option you have for cooking is slow cooking, like 100%. If you're gonna cook meat, the best thing you can do is use a slow cooker. That is for optimal nutrition, right? Granted, it's 4th of July, throw some chicken breasts on the grill, throw some steaks, throw some burgers on the grill, turn them regularly, don't sit them on one side forever and blacken them, turn them. You can turn them multiple times, cook it on a lower heat, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but you got all day, right? Just do these little steps to make the grilled meat a little bit healthier because this is really a big deal, you know? You don't want to be consuming cancer-causing agents when you don't have to. It's the same thing as heating the crap out of something like an olive oil or grass-fed butter. Just burning, 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 burning this thing, burning foods as much as you can, like heating the oil too much to where it gets to the smoke point and smokes, you're always gonna deal with issues of carcinogens, right? Now, a smoker, um, it can be, it can be a good choice, but the issue is like, I'd much rather you use one of those like pellet grills where you're actually burning different types of wood. It's like, that's charcoal. I don't love the idea of charcoal for cooking and smokers, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not ridiculously up to speed on smokers. Um, I know that pellet grills and things like that are pretty fantastic. Um, in terms of like a traditional smoker that people would use for like a brisket, I don't know much about it. Um, you could probably actually educate me more than I could you on smokers. So I don't have a ton of experience there. Um, it seems a little bit iffy to me, the idea of literally just creating smoke and cooking it, you know? Um, if that's how it works, let me know. Let me know if I'm completely off base on that. But new in terms of overall 
nutrition, optimal nutrition for the meat, slow cooker is absolutely the best way to go. So it's pretty easy if you have a slow cooker, especially when you have people over and things like that, throw the meat in a slow cooker, cook your veggies and throw some fruits and pineapple, whatever, maybe some veggie skewers on the grill, cook the meat in the slow cooker. That's pretty awesome, right? I'll give you an example. So I don't even, like I have a grill at my house and when I cook steak, I don't use the grill. Um, I just don't, I don't like like the open flame and the blackening and all that thing. I use a cast iron skillet and I use my oven in a particular way. I can throw a uh, show notes up to that or something. There's a particular way to cook a perfect medium rare steak and it doesn't involve a grill. It's actually much, much better on the cast iron. Um, so little tricks like that, cooking meat, you don't have to grill it, but I know there's a convenience issue too. You want to be outside and all that. So again, if you do cook it, marinate it, use olive oil, olive oil, don't overcook. Don't burn the crap out of it. Don't light it on fire. You know, make sure the grill's clean. Little things like that, right? So, let's see what we got here. Yes, pellet grill. Awesome. Pellet grills are fantastic. Trigger is a smoker that uses pellets. Awesome. Totally cool. Yeah. If you're using pellets, I much, much prefer pellets to lighting charcoal cubes on fire. It's just very, very chemically, okay? It's a lot of, a lot of junk you probably don't want to be eating. So, uh, let's talk about some snacks, right? My number one favorite snack for any cookout is guacamole. Now, you can make guacamole by yourself. You can just mash up avocados. You can use herbs and seasonings, salt and pepper, lemon juice, lime juice, all these things. You can make the guacamole yourself. There is tons of really, really good store-bought guacamole dips, like holy guacamole is one. They use, they have an organic version, they have a plain version. There's a ton of guacamole options. And guacamole is fantastic to dip with just about anything and I'm gonna show you some of my favorite brands just because I don't usually don't go into a ton of brands unless we're talking about like supplements but this is how we handle cookouts at the Nalt house so I like to dip uh, these things in guacamole all right so guac is about as good as it gets this is fantastic and using guacamole as a snack is actually you're getting those healthy fats you're getting a lot of dietary fiber you're getting healthy fats so believe it or not even if you're making some poor choices this guacamole can even help regulate your blood sugar, especially if, if you mash up the guacamole and you take something like MCT oil or coconut oil and you mix it in the guacamole, you're gonna have an even better response blood glucose wise. You can actually blunt some of the, the glycemic index spikes that can come from some of these carbohydrate rich foods, right? So if you are, if you are eating fruit or something on the 4th of July or you're eating you know, ice cream or whatever you end up might eating on the 4th of July, if you're getting in plenty of healthy fats, you can kind of blunt that glycemic, the, the glycemic index response that you're gonna have, that blood sugar spike, the insulin spike. You can kind of help that a little bit, right? Again, these are all hacks just to try to mitigate the damage. So there's a brand called Terra. Terra is fantastic. They have, I like to buy their plantain chips. So they have green plantain chips, amazing, and they have uh, Chipotle sweet potato chips. And if you read their ingredients, the reason why I love this brand so much is because of the oils that they use. So they use olive oil and they use avocado oil. So here's the tricky thing is I'll go to a lot of cookouts with friends who are somewhat healthy and things like that. And they'll be like, hey, I bought organic, simple truth, sweet potato chips, right? From Kroger or something. But you look at those ingredients and you're dealing with hydrogenated vegetable oils. So they're taking a normally healthy food item and they're cooking it in carcinogenic oils, right? So you need to be careful about that. If you see the ingredients are like organic sweet potatoes, corn, uh, corn oil, or canola oil, or grapeseed oil, or soy, or you know what I mean? There's just a lot of different ingredients, like soybean oil, you don't want that. Any kind of hydrogenated oil, you don't want that. So you're literally, it's again, carcinogens, carcinogens, carcinogens. So you might get sweet potato chips, and they're, they've been fried, or cooked, or whatever, however their processing method is, in a carcinogenic, uh, vegetable oil. You don't want that. A highly processed vegetable oil. That's terrible. So these vegetable oils, I have a little list for you here what to watch out for, right? Soybean oil, grapeseed, corn, anything with corn in it, peanut oil, cottonseed oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, partially hydrogenated, any oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, horrible, horrible, horrible. It is hypothesize that these oils are actually worse for you than smoking. So like you'd be better off with a smoking habit not eating these oils than the other way around. That's pretty crazy. That's how terrible these oils are and they're hidden in everything. So I like to use the plantain chips, Terra plantain chips and Terra sweet potato chips because of the oils that they use. Now another thing that you can dip in guacamole and it sounds crazy but if you've never tried it, it's delicious, is pork rinds. 
So pork rinds are actually pretty awesome, but again, you have to be very careful because you can get a $1 bag of pork rinds that's this big and it's going to have canola oil or partially hydrogenated vegetable oil or so soybean oil or corn oil, soybean oil. Soybean oil is hard to say. <laughs> so all these terrible oils that are gonna exist in a lot of these pork rinds. So you have to be really careful. Just read the ingredients. Make sure you read the ingredients and avoid these oils at all costs because we're gonna talk about things later like alcohol and things of that nature and the more carcinogenic or free radical causing just really toxic things you put in your body, the worse potential you have for hangover. That doesn't just come from booze. People don't understand this. Like a lot of the hangover symptoms, people make terrible food choices when they're drinking. So it all plays together. So you're spiking blood sugar with these liquid drinks full of sugar, you're spiking blood sugar with crappy food choices, and a cookout is a perfect combination of the two, right? You wanna drink Bud Heavies all day or Bud Lights all day or Mick Ultra because it has less carbs. You're gonna pound those all day, then you're gonna eat ice cream, then you're gonna eat Krispy Kreme donuts, then you're gonna eat the dessert, then you're gonna eat burgers with buns on it and hot dogs with buns on it, and it's just, the insulin spike in your body and blood sugar spikes and crashes all day are just terrible for you. And that's, that's a lot of where the hangover actually comes from. Not necessarily the alcohol, right? The alcohol plays a part. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying alcohol is good for you. So another uh, good brand that I like uh, for nuts is you can get nut mixes and that is Back to Nature. So Back to Nature has these really, really great mixes of of nuts, back to nature brand. They have like all these healthy mixes, like mixes of like cashews and pistachios and macadamia nuts. And like they have some with like, uh, you know, dried fruit in there or whatever. So some of them have a little more sugar than others. Check the ingredients, make sure you're not eating a bunch of peanuts because I'm sure they have really healthy mixes. They have not so healthy mixes, but I've seen some really good mixes with this back to nature brand. Mixed nuts are fantastic to have around. Buy a bunch of bags of them, throw them in bowls, make them look pretty. So you got nuts and bowls, you got some pork rinds that don't have oils in them, you got this Terra brand plantain chips, you got sweet potato chips, you're dipping them in guacamole, it's fantastic for snacks, you can have a table full of this stuff. Then you can go with a classic veggie tray, right? Get yourself a veggie tray, just replace that little thing in the center with uh, some Primal Kitchen options. Primal Kitchen Ranch, Primal Kitchen Greek Salad uh, Dressing, Primal Kitchen Vinaigrette, whatever you wanna do, right? Get yourself Primal Kitchen brand dressings, get a veggie tray, I mean, you look at it like this, you already have a full blown, like your island in the kitchen would just be loaded with snacks, right? You don't need, it doesn't have to be donut holes. It doesn't have to be Doritos. It can be sweet potato chipotle chips from Terra instead of Doritos. These tiny little choices that you make, they really, really add up. They make a big, big difference. Um, so let's talk about recipes, right? Because I hate them. Hate them. Hate them, hate them, hate them, hate them, hate them. And I really feel like people get mad at me about this. Like people like recipes so much, recipes so much that they actually get mad at me, right? So this is how I handle recipes. I think people get confused. I'm not saying like you shouldn't use mixes of food because I mix food all the time to make different things. Um, all I'm saying is like it doesn't need to be like you need 15 ingredients and a pinch of this herb and a quarter teaspoon of that herb and a half teaspoon of this and a tablespoon of raw honey and five drops of stevia and this and this and this and this and this, right? It doesn't need to be crazy. That's too freaking overwhelming. So I'll give you an example of something that we make, one of my favorite cookout recipes, um, and that is a broccoli salad, right? I'm just gonna call it BS because I have a child brain and that's funny to me. So we're gonna show you the BS recipe, right? Literally, you do broccoli. Okay, now keep in mind, I have no idea how much of all of these items. You put them in a bowl and mix them. That's it, this is why I hate recipes, because I know people are gonna see me write this on the board and they're gonna get mad. Like they're actually gonna be upset, like, what do you mean you don't know how much broccoli? This is crazy, right? And that's what I'm talking about with food freedom, is if you're dealing with the approved foods list, just literally grab stuff and mix it. Throw approved food items on the grill. Throw approved food items in a slow cooker. Throw approved food items in a cast iron skillet. Throw them in the oven. Throw them in a bowl. Mix them together raw, whatever it may be. Not raw meat, obviously, but mix this stuff together. Just let it be easy and simple. It should be simple. So if we take broccoli, now we want Primal Kitchen, right? Primal Kitchen. I don't have much room on this whiteboard. Um, Primal Kitchen, use their mayo. They also have a chipotle mayo. The chipotle mayo is insanely good. So you can use chipotle mayo or you can use mayo. And then all we do is we add bacon. Now this next part is gonna freak people out because it has fruit. 
It's a holiday, right? You can put blueberries in there. So just throw some fresh blueberries, some bacon, mix up a Primal Kitchen mayo or chipotle mayo, throw the broccoli in there, and then literally just salt and pepper to taste. This stuff is delicious and it will disappear at your cookout so fast. A giant, giant bowl of it will be gone in absolutely no time. But this is an example of right here, when we talk about freedom and food freedom, this is an example of it. Like this is a recipe, guys, you know? But it's not called, you know, um, the, the Clovis celebratory 4th of July independence salad with a flag on it that makes it look pretty, you know? It's just this, it's just food. Once you're just dealing with food, you just mix it, throw it together, right? It's awesome, it is awesome. All right, let's take a little break, check some comments, and as for fruit, right, here like blueberries, don't freak out, guys. It's 4th of July, right? This, this, yes, I harp on fruit all the time. I tell you that fruit is toxic, chocolate is a superfood, all that is true, right? It's all true. We're talking about one day of the year, or maybe a couple days a year if you're talking about different holidays, and at the end of the day, this is not a Krispy Kreme donut. It's just not the same thing, okay? I know I talk about sugar all the time. Fructose is a dangerous form of sugar. But if you're talking about a few, blue, few blueberries and a couple servings of a broccoli salad that has these ingredients in it, this is incredible. Just go with this. It's fantastic, right? Broccoli, Primal Kitchen, bacon, blueberries, salt, and pepper. It's that easy to make a delicious dish, and it's very cheap, and you can throw it in a giant bowl. You can make a ton of it, right? So let's uh, take a little break. Look at some comments, because I, I got some comments coming in here, and I can see this. Yes, I was hoping for the BS. I know, I saw it. That's part of the reason I did it, Jackie. I saw you asking if my mom would like to share it. Um, brand of chips. What about Flackers by Doctor in the Kitchen? Unfamiliar. Uh, check the ingredients list and cross-reference it with the approved foods list. I've actually never heard of Flackers. Um, cool. If it's a cool product, I want to know about it. I have to try harder to like avocado. Now, remember, with one way to, to like avocado is with guacamole, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can throw, look, I'm going to look around my kitchen right now. You can throw apple cider vinegar in it. You can throw um, avocado oil in it. You can throw basil, oregano, cumin, uh, coriander, turmeric. You can throw MCT oil. You can throw collagen peptides and add protein to it, right? I'm just literally looking around my kitchen and picking things. You can pour coffee in there if you want to. I don't know, whatever you want to do. Literally just mash it up until it tastes like something that you like, you know? You can throw whatever you want in there. Just gonna post this here. What if I drink a Sierra Nevada beer tomorrow? Charcoal after each one, will it affect me for days later? If so, probably not worth it. Trying to think of questions for you. Okay, that's a good question because Sierra Nevada is friggin' delicious. Um, I love beer. Beer is one of my favorite drinks ever. And I will not drink it. I won't mess with it even a little bit. I had a beer, I had a soul beer in a cenote in the middle of nowhere, Mexico, two and a half hours outside of Tulum in no man's land, right? Uh, it was a dollar and I was in a cenote in Mexico and I said, I'm doing this, why not, right? And I'm gonna be fine, I have a really strong gut, I have a healthy gut microbiome. Um, Sam, especially with what I know, some of the stuff that you're dealing with right now, it's just not worth it. If you were to look up the most unhealthy brands of beer on planet Earth, Sierra Nevada is gonna top that list. Um, it's an absurd number of net carbohydrates per serving. Those pale ales are terrible. They're absolutely terrible. Um, it's just not worth it. I mean, you could do all the coconut charcoal in the world and you, you're not gonna feel great after a few Sierra Nevadas. I mean, if you have one or two, you'll probably be okay. You'll probably wake up the next day and feel just fine. But again, I can't guarantee that because if I knew, like I've mapped my entire gut microbiome. So like, I know I don't have leaky gut. I know I don't have inflammatory markers in my gut. I know I don't have a gut microbiome imbalance. If you're dealing with something like leaky gut and you drink some Sierra Nevadas, you're gonna have trouble for days. It will affect you for days, for sure. The lectin content is just through the roof. It's like concentrated. You're drinking concentrated lectin juice, basically, right? Um, yeah, I mean, they, they were my favorite at one point too. In college, I absolutely loved them. Sierra Nevadas were great. What else we got? I'm gonna try to stick to vodka sodas though. Okay, that's cool, vodka bubbly. We're gonna go over some of my favorite options as well uh, for sipping drinks. So sad, good to know. Thank you, you're very welcome. Okay, ooh, there's fireworks going off, scary. I'm gonna have to go get my gun just in case. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about sunscreen. This is kind of a divisive topic. Um, why? Because it's awful. It's just terrible, and I can't wrap my head around the parenting thing um, in multiple ways. I'm not a parent, can't wrap my head around that. Two, 
why you would think this is a good idea to lather all over your kid. I simply can't understand this, right? Um, it's really crazy. Most of the commercial sunscreens available actually increase your risk of skin cancer. You're lathering on carcinogens on your skin that are observed by the epidermis, which is a giant tissue, it's a giant organ, it's a bunch of cells that absorb what you put on it, right? So this skin cancer thing is ridiculous. Like, the, you, you're literally increasing your risk of skin cancer by using these commercial products. Are there some natural brands? Yes, but you have to plan ahead, right? You're gonna have to, like I can't give you, I'm not gonna give you natural product brand names tonight, it's the night before 4th of July, right? You'd have to get on thrivemarket.com or get on Amazon or something else and find one of these natural brands. Um, the Wellness Mama, if you go to the Wellness Mama blog, she actually has a recipe for homemade sunscreen with things like coconut oil in it. So you can get some decent brands, um, you have to be really careful here because if you're taking copper tone or whatever the one is with the little girl's butt with the dog that's pulling on her bathing suit, that little brand, you don't want to put this stuff on your child's skin. So let's talk about this, right? I'll give you an example. When I was in Mexico swimming in the cenote, in Mexico, um, the Great Coral Reef, all these places in the Caribbean, there's a huge problem with what? Death of coral. Um, sea coral is dying, marine life is dying, marine plant life, marine fish, like animal life is dying, right? Dying because of tourist sunscreen, literally. Like if you go to a cenote and they see you putting on sunscreen, they're gonna make you get in a shower and scrub yourself before you get in the cenote. This stuff is straight poison and you're lathering it on your skin because we have trained human beings to be afraid of the sun. Guess what? If you have a vitamin D deficiency, which should come from the sun, it's the single most potent source of vitamin D we have, your risk of breast cancer basically doubles if you have a vitamin D deficiency. So everyone's afraid of cancer from the sun. The truth is you get cancer without the sun. Now am I saying you're gonna sit in the sun for hours and hours and hours and hours? No, absolutely not. That would not be smart. A sunburn is your body's way of telling you to get the hell out of the sun, you dummy, right? But throughout all of human history, it was not a thing to escape your nine to five job, get to a beach, drink a daiquiri, and lay in the sun, and put a timer on your phone for 45 minutes, and then, or 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna flip, so I can cook evenly like a piece of bacon. Let me flip again, oh, 15 minutes, let me reapply some tanning oil, SPF eight, to help me cook myself like a piece of bacon. This is dumb. It's not intelligent behavior. Okay, let's just be honest about that, right? So the best way to handle this, one, I told you I'm not gonna go through sunscreen brands just because literally most of the really good ones you're gonna have to get online or go to a Whole Foods or something like that. So what I did instead is sunscreen ingredients to look for, right? Almond oil, coconut oil, zinc oxide, red raspberry seed oil, carrot seed oil, and shea butter. Shea, I think that's how you say it. I don't know the bougie words. Shea, 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 shea butter. Yeah, that stuff. All right, cool. Just look for ingredients. You can look through the ingredients and if you can't pronounce them and they look crazy, I mean, I can't pronounce that. I'm pretty sure it's she, I don't know. But um, you need to look for just decent oils that you can use, but even still, the protection level, like with these natural brands, you might get like 30 SPF or five SPF or 20 SPF. Now, these, these are obviously safe sun times, and the reason why you need the safe sun times is because it's stupid to sit in the sun and bake like a piece of bread, right? Or a piece of bacon. It's ridiculous. So, my approach for this, my approach for sun. That says logic. Let's talk about logic, right? My two favorite pieces of gear for sun. Under Armour and hats. Number three, which is totally free, is shade. It's not the sun that's bad, guys. It's the human behavior that causes this to be a problem. Even if you're on a boat, most boats have a canopy. You can sit under that. You can bring long sleeve clothes, especially with your little kids, right? I hear this all the time. It's like, my kid's gonna overheat if I put clothes on him. No, like if you got a little boy and you have him in the bathing suit and he's three years old, and his legs are exposed, his entire top is exposed, and you're gonna have him out on the beach, and you didn't bring an umbrella, and you didn't bring clothes for the kid, that just makes you a dummy parent, right? <laughs> it's like, you need to plan ahead for these things. Like, you shouldn't be smothering carcinogenic agents 
on your child to protect them from the sun when you could have just bought an umbrella and brought it with you, right? Or bought Under Armour, or bought one of those cool Indiana Jones looking hats. Buy that for your kid, he'll be super pumped to wear it. Sunglasses, what do you need? You can protect them. If you're at a cookout, use a tree, use shade, get into the house, whatever you need to do. 15 minutes of sun at a time, you know? Take it easy. Now, ideally throughout summer, what you should be doing is getting your skin used to the sun, okay? That's what you wanna do. Get your skin used to the sun. I recommend at least 15 minutes of sun time a day. Now, another thing is like I have, I have a lot of white Under Armour that I have. White, really light, breezy Under Armour. I bring that anytime I'm on a boat, anytime I'm out by the pool, at mom's house, whatever. Like I bring my white Under Armour with me, right? And it's usually short, short sleeve shirts. Why? Like the other day, I played golf for four hours, right? And I'm not burnt. So these areas of your body that are generally exposed to the sun a lot more, like my, my chest and abs are not exposed to the sun as much as my forearms. So even if I don't put sunscreen on, but I feel myself getting a little hot, I can throw an Under Armour t-shirt on. This part of my body is probably gonna be fine, right? It's more conditioned to be in the sun. It's not a big deal. Same thing with your legs. Women, if you wear skirts or short shorts all throughout the summer, like your legs are probably gonna be safer, your, your shoulders and arms are gonna be safer because you're wearing tank tops, whatever, that kind of thing. Now, if you're in a bathing suit or whatever, literally just plan ahead. Like, if you're an adult, Ex Officio is a great brand. Um, X Officio, I think. I can put this in the show notes. X Officio, Under Armour is another fantastic brand. I mean, like when I was in Peru, right? When you're in Peru, there are bugs freaking everywhere, right? But it's the jungle, it's 100 degrees and humid as hell. I was in long sleeves and pants 90% of the time. I had a hat on, had a hood up, right? But these pieces of fabric weigh next to nothing, but they block the sun. Actually, some of them are actually SPF clothing. You can get SPF clothing, right? So that's the thing, is don't get horribly burnt, right? That's crazy. But make sure for your kids especially, don't let them get burnt, have umbrellas, have hats, have little sunglasses that the kids look cool in, have long sleeve shirts that are very breathable. There's water clothes, they can go in the water with these clothes on and be protected from the sun. Just plan ahead, it's better than putting these chemicals on your child's body, okay? So I wanna take a look because, uh, yeah, Beauty Counter is really great. Um, Beauty Counter is one, Tabitha, let me know if you know if there's a store around you that um, you've been to that you can get it. Because uh, that's the thing is I don't know exactly where to grab these things. Um, this is going to sound crazy. But like I don't buy sunscreen. I don't want to use it. I don't like to use it. Like when I was in the pontoon for my birthday, I put sunscreen on. And it was there. We had it. It was a spray sunscreen. Again, the rest of my life is like 100%. Um, healthy, I don't have a problem with glucose, I don't have high blood sugar, I don't have high insulin, like my risk of cancer is very, very low. Um, but still, it's not great to put these things directly on your skin. So just try to be smart about the sun exposure time. If you're out in the sun and you find yourself on a boat and there's no canopy and you don't have a shirt and you don't have pants to put on, you don't have anything like that, use the sunscreen. Don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. Just don't make a habit of it. This slather, 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 cook your body. Slather, 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 turn over, cook your body. Slather, 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 cook your body. Those kinds of behaviors are just not something that you should be doing, okay? What else we got here? <laughs> she is, is only a bougie word <laughs> to a man. Yeah, that's totally true. Bougie words. All right, what else we got? Oh, see? Sold through reps, that stuff drives me nuts. That drives me nuts. Mostly direct sales, right? Like, I didn't even realize that. I knew that it was a good brand, I looked it up, but they, why do they do that? Like, go to retail, man. Just put it in a store, that's so ridiculous. That's a bougie way to sell products, okay? Direct sales is a bougie way to sell products. You bunch of jerks, beauty counter, I'm upset with you now. All right, let's talk about the big elephant in the room. That is booze. So this is basic, I've talked enough about alcohol um, in previous AMAs. I talked about uh, sugar alcohols, how they're burnt in the body, how they're used as energy, how they go on top of the fuel tank, so alcohol, glucose, glycogen, fat in the body's fuel tank, blah, 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 blah. blah. Now we're gonna talk about brands that I really, really like, okay? So the biggest thing that you miss out on with cookouts and boats, it's so hot in my house right now, I can't even tell you, the AC is still broken. I'm gonna start sweating, sorry about that. Um, so. One of my favorites is what I'm always trying to do is replace things like beer because you want to have something that you can sip on, right? And it can get a little bit tricky if every single drink that you sip on is a tequila and soda water with a lime wedge. Like, 
you can get drunk real quick, right? Depending on how strong you make those drinks. So um, what I like, and these are actually pretty strong too, I have to warn you, these first two um, brands I'm gonna recommend to you, they're 5% alcohol. So a typical beer is like 3.2% alcohol, might be 3.5, something like Sierra Nevada is a little bit higher in alcohol content, way more net carbohydrates, right? So these are 5% alcohol. Like if you're a 110 pound girl and you drink two or three of these things, you're gonna be all right. You'll be, right. You'll be feeling it, right? So my favorite right now, and these change because different products come out. Um, I met these guys at Paleo FX a few years back when they were like first launching. White Claw, so White Claw makes these seltzer waters. These seltzer waters are the best thing that I've found to replace sipping drinks such as beer, right? So White Claw is a really good one. They have uh, two grams of net carbs. Two grams net carbs per can, right? Now, like I said, they're 5% alcohol, so you don't need to drink as many. It's, it's almost like drinking 1.25 or 1.5 beers, whatever that math turns out to be, depending on the alcohol content of the beer you're used to drinking, right? So 5% alcohol, two grams of carbohydrates. They're delicious. That's the thing, is the combination. This White Claw brand, they don't use any preservatives or artificial chemicals. They use cane sugar, fermented cane sugar, and fruit juice, and that's basically it, right? So this is a really good brand. They're delicious. They taste really, really good. Um, the next brand I'm gonna show you, so this is the best bang for your buck in terms of the com combo of not being too bad for you and tasting really good. Um, another one is Truly. Now, Truly has changed. They're, people didn't realize this, um, but I've watched Truly over the years and their recipes have tweaked a little bit. The carbohydrate content has changed, the flavors have changed a little bit, the cans have changed a little bit, everything looks a little bit different. They used to be better, in my opinion, when they first came out, it was one gram net carbohydrate. Um, I believe right now they're at two grams of carbs, I think. They may have some flavors with one gram of carbs. Um, I know they have some with two. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. Again, I'm kind of spitballing this episode. Um, but these, I will, you will always see me with these at a cookout. I will bring a bunch of them to a cookout, and I'll try to convert as many people off of beer as I can. Now, this is not shitting in a punch bowl. I will literally buy 40 of these, and I will start handing them to people. Why? Because I love them, and I want them to be healthy and happy. And I say, try this White Claw. And they go, this is delicious, incredible, right? Now, I'm gonna show you my secret trick. For the people that just are little sugar burners and love, love, love sweet stuff, let me tell you a secret, right? So you bring White Claw or you bring Truly, either of these. Bring them to your cookout, right? Get a solo cup filled with ice and make it, again, I don't measure, guys, don't get mad at me. Make it three quarters Zevia, I mean, I'm sorry, three quarters White Claw, and I just spoiled the rest, one quarter, Zevia. Freaking delicious. If you pick up some, Ze some Zevia and you bring White Claw with you, you have about the most delicious drink. For someone like me who doesn't eat sugar, this is like cave your head in sweet. Like I take a sip of that and I'm like, I'm a five-year-old eating a pixie stick. This is a straight candy. This is the most sweet thing I ever have in my entire life. It's almost like headache make my teeth hurt sweet because I'm not used to sweet things, right? But try that, three quarters of a cup. I don't measure stuff, guys, ever, right? That's my problem, too. If I start doing tequila and soda water, I don't measure anything. I just pour stuff, right? So you're gonna see six years ago, seven years ago, savage rock star TV show Justin come out real quick if I start free pouring tequila and soda. You have no idea. That Justin's a whole different ball game, right? But this is delicious. Zevia and Truly, Zevia, Zevia and White Claw, delicious. And what's really fun is you can mix and match. Like I was doing, I did a, uh, I did a raspberry White Claw, I think it was, no, it was black cherry White Claw and Zevia root beer. And it was amazing. Like unbelievably good. I just started making them for everybody. This is on my birthday. And so I just start making them for everybody. Like, you gotta try this White Claw and Zevia. And people are like, this is the most delicious drink ever, right? The Zevia, zero net carbohydrates. The White Claw, two grams of carbs, right? So I'm gonna talk to you about another, a couple different items um, that are a little more tricky, but I wanna give people different options because some people just don't like these. They're not going to enjoy it. Now, if you can drink in moderation, uh, again, both of these are gluten-free as well. I did want to say that, right? Both of these are gluten-free. You're not dealing with lectin issues or anything like that, right? Now, another option is cider. Um, actually, you guys don't need this stay, to stay up there. You can see that. White Claw, two grams of carbs, truly. These are my favorite items for replacing beer, right? For replacing sipping drinks. 
This is my favorite. Now, cider, before I knew better, um, when I was just straight paleo, like about you know seven years ago when I made the switch to paleo, I really didn't know uh, what I know now about carbohydrates and sugar and all these things. Like my learning has changed over the years. So my go-to was ciders. Um, these seltzer waters really weren't popular. Seven years ago, these products didn't even exist, right? So um, I, I would go turn to ciders. Now the problem is, don't even think about something like Woodchuck or Angry Orchard, right? You go to a bar and you order a cider, it's gonna be Angry Orchard or it's gonna be Woodchuck. That's what they're gonna have on tap. They might have some bottled options. Angry or Orchard, Woodchuck, you're talking 24 grams of sugar, 27 grams of sugar, 23 grams of sugar, depending on what fruity little flavor they've come up with. This stuff is diabetes in a bottle. Literally, it's just terrible, right? So if you want ciders, there's one brand in particular. Now remember, I'm a Boston kid, right? I moved to Nashville from Boston, grew up in Rhode Island, Harpoon Brewery, which by the way, Sam, Harpoon has amazing IPAs. Um, but Harpoon Brewery in Boston, um, if you're gonna go with cider, the single best one, and I looked this up for you guys, it only ships to about 25 different states. They're all on the East Coast. I think it hits like Minnesota and Texas. I think they go like way far south but there seems to be nothing on the West Coast. But the Harpoon Brewery, um, they have, I believe all, all of the cider is gluten-free. Yes, yeah, their cider is gluten-free. And it's seven grams of net carbs. God, my handwriting is bad today. So seven grams net carbs per cider. Um, and I believe it's 5% alcohol, I'm pretty sure. Again, I'm guessing on this stuff. Um, I haven't drank cider in a long time just because it's, I mean, that adds up quick. You have three of those, you're looking at 21 grams of sugar. You have four, you're looking at 28 grams of sugar. Like that adds up really, really quick, especially if you're gonna be eating plantain chips or eating sweet potato chips or things like that that are very carb heavy, you know? So cider, uh, I should probably write what that one is, Harpoon. So look up Harpoon Cider. This is really the only one that I can recommend because all the other ones are just really high in sugar. There's another one called um, Crispin. Now, Crispin is tricky because you need to get like their natural. I think they have like a champagne version that's, it. that's like a pink label. I think there's a pink label one and a blue label one. The blue label is 10 grams of sugar. So 10 grams net. And I think they may have one that's seven grams. It's either seven or 11, I really can't remember. Um, but these are just a couple options. Harpoon, this is the one. If you're gonna go with a cider, try to find Harpoon. If you absolutely need a cider and can't find Harpoon, Crispin is pretty much available anywhere. Some bars actually have Crispin on tap. Uh, some places in Nashville have it, I know that, like when I go watch football or whatever and I'm looking for decent options. Um, so Crispin's one, Harpoon's another, seven grams. The only ingredient in Harpoon is fermented apples. That's it. Literally, one ingredient. It's just fermented apples, that's it. Um, so what else we got? Uh, so why is Primal Kitchen Chipotle okay but not other peppers? So again, it's in processing. You can remove the lectin content somewhat from peppers. And I'm also, you'll notice, Primal Kitchen Chipotle Mayo is not on your adult approved foods list. We're talking about holidays here, right? So we're talking about days that aren't going to be perfect. I don't want any of these to be staple foods. I sure as hell, like you're not about to hear me say, hey, Harpoon is now on the approved foods list. No way, not even close. Crispin, not on the approved foods list. Truly, not on the approved foods list. White Claw, not on the approved foods list. This entire AMA is about mitigating damage, making slightly better choices. These are not things that you want in your body. Trust me, they're not. These are in no way, shape, or form healthy. Now, Primal Kitchen Chipotle Mayo, that's not terrible for you. And remember, lectins are a tricky thing because lectins affect different people in different ways. My approved foods list is foolproof. I remove any and all possible issues. Even still, some people have things like an egg intolerance, right? And eggs are on the approved foods list. It's impossible to have an approved foods list for every single person across the board. But trust me, you don't want, your body tells you why you don't want to mess with peppers. The reaction that you have to spices, some people like it, but if you do too much, it's very unpleasant. If you have a ghost pepper, you're going to basically be hospitalized because of what happens to you. This is not good, okay? You don't want to make this a regular part of your diet. Now, that said, I could look into the processing um, of creating Chipotle mayo from Pimel Kitchen and we can see where that falls in, what peppers they use, some peppers are different than others, et cetera, et cetera. But again, I'm not talking about approved foods, I'm talking about mitigating damage for the 4th of July cookout, right? What else we got? Okay, so I wanna touch on that again, right? Um, all right, let's see, my favorite, White Claw, yep, White Claw is delicious, I've tried Truly, very good, we'll try White Claw. White Claw is a little sweeter, I think it's better. Um, so excited about White Claw being okay. Now again, this goes back to what we just talked about with the mayo. I'm not saying this is okay. Not saying any of this is okay. I'm giving you tips and tricks to mitigate the damage, 
right? I don't want these to be a part of your staple diet. None of these items are ever gonna be added to the approved foods list. You know, don't drink alcohol. Two Towns Cider has eight grams per cider. It's out of Oregon. Yeah, again, that's tricky. It's kind of like the Harpoon thing. Like Harpoon, they ship 25 different states. I can get Harpoon here in Nashville. Um, I'm sure there are tons of really, really great uh, ciders, but a lot of these are locally brewed. You know, there's probably some Nashville cider out here that I don't even know about, you know, that have good sugar contents or whatever, but you just want to make sure that uh, just check the sugar content, check the ingredients, see if they're adding things to that ingredient list. It's another reason why I like Harpoon so much. Yes, it's high in sugar. Do I recommend it all the time? No, not even a little bit. If you have two or three in one day, that's totally cool. Or you have one Harpoon and then drink Truly, or one Harpoon and then have White Claw, things like this. It's just trying to mitigate the damage. Like I said, we're just trying to make better decisions here. I don't, I should have done a disclaimer on this. I don't want anything in this AMA to be construed as good for you. So let's just be clear about that. I'm not telling you any of this stuff is good for you. The broccoli salad, that's good for you, for sure. That's good for you, right? Uh, the guacamole, great for you, awesome. The sweet potato chips, great for you in moderation, but we know if you're tracking things like macronutrients, carbohydrates, could get tricky real quick. All right, so a couple hacks I wanna go over. This went an hour, the, these things go by so quick, I can't even believe it. All right, so let's do a couple hacks. Uh, since we're talking about booze, I'm gonna tell you hangover hacks, right? So you can mitigate the damage. Now again, if you're making bad food choices, then the odds of a hangover are increased significantly, right? So let's talk about hangover. Um, I'm not gonna go crazy, crazy on this because it's the night before, I'm not gonna geek out. Like I've been deep in the world of biohacking and nootropics for a long time, right? So you can, I'm not gonna tell you to run out and get N-acetylcysteine tonight, right? I'm not gonna tell you to get L-theanine and all these things that you can get. I'm not gonna go tell you to get 5-HTP, which I'll tell you about 5-HTP in a little bit, or liposomal glutathione. You're, just, you're not getting these things between today and tomorrow. It's probably just not gonna happen. Maybe if you have a Whole Foods right next to your house, you could get a couple brands of some of these things. But generally speaking, I'm gonna give recommendations that should work for everybody. So, simple hacks. If you need a mixer, mineral water. Now, I'm not saying sparkling water. I'm not saying, like, there's, like, Perrier, right? Sparkling water. There's no minerals in it. Like, look at the mineral content. Uh, Evian is one that actually has minerals in it. My favorite water of all time is Mountain Valley Spring Water. And Mountain Valley Spring Water, you can definitely get it like a Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, places like that. Um, some local grocery stores carry it. That's Mountain Valley Spring Water is about the healthiest water you can get. So if you use mineral water as your mixer, you're going to hydrate while you dehydrate, basically, right? It's uh, You're getting those minerals sodium, chloride, potassium, all these things, while you're drinking alcohol, right? Now, the obvious, the obvious way to do that without mineral water is your salt shots. So salt shots are very, very important when you're drinking alcohol. Now remember, everybody forgets this, right? They go, I did a salt shot today, congrats. You need to do five to seven more of them, right? A half teaspoon is about a gram of sodium, right? So if we do a half teaspoon, you're talking five X, right? Throughout the day, don't do this all at once. You do it all at once, you're gonna get diarrhea. It's not gonna be pleasant, right? Like I do three grams in the morning. Three grams is borderline. If I were to do five grams all at once, I'm gonna have trouble. But because I do three grams, I'm 165 pounds, mostly muscle, right? If you're a 115 pound girl, don't drink three grams. Like you're gonna run straight to the bathroom, right? So separate it into quarter teaspoons or half teaspoons all throughout the day. Try to drink, even if it's just a little cup of water, six ounces or whatever, in between your drinks, try to drink those. Get plenty of sodium. Um, I'd also like to see you get potassium. And potassium, for that, you can just use a cheap little product called No Salt, which is just pure potassium. And this, you're gonna want about 2,500 milligrams. Now, some people get scared because there are stories of uh, irregular heartbeats if you do way too much potassium but you have to do a boatload. For it to be really da dangerous, you'd have to be up over 4,500 milligrams, like literally two grams more than this. So take it easy, you know, do 2,000 to 2,500 milligrams of potassium, five to seven grams of sodium. Make sure you get this throughout the day while you're drinking alcohol, right? Now, another little hack, um, running out of space, is 500 milligrams of just vitamin C. But 500 milligrams of vitamin C between every single drink. So if you have six beers, you're having six 500 milligram vitamin C capsules, okay? You really wanna do that. Take this in between every drink, load up, even if you've had, let's say you've had five grams, right before you go to bed, maybe dump another full gram, so a, a half a teaspoon, 
or a quarter teaspoon or whatever, get a little dose of salt and electrolytes, like these right here are just electrolytes, right? So get some electrolytes in water before you go to bed. Vitamin C, 500 milligrams in between every drink. And the big granddaddy of them all is charcoal. Activated charcoal is fantastic. You can get a lot of different brands of activated charcoal. Um, I like activated charcoal from coconut. That's coconut charcoal. I use Bulletproof brand. Um, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it in Whole Foods, whatever. You can walk into most stores, you can find uh, activated charcoal in most like vitamin shop, GNC, that kind of place. You can definitely find charcoal. Um, I just prefer a Bulletproof brand. I know that they source it well. I know a bunch of people inside of Bulletproof that work there and uh, that just makes me feel better about it. But activated charcoal, great. Take one capsule with every single drink, literally every single drink, right? Fantastic. So get some activated charcoal, take one with each drink, 500 milligrams of vitamin C between each drink, get this many electrolytes, five to seven grams of sodium, about 2,500 milligrams of potassium, um, use some mineral water. If you don't have mineral water, just use these electrolytes. If you do this, it's going to drastically increase the way you feel the next day. So remember that. Now, I was gonna talk about 5-HTP. 5-HTP is really just, it was created for people who use MDMA. Like it was literally for the come down after ecstasy. Um, I've never used ecstasy or MDMA, so I don't know, but uh, it can counteract the depressive qualities of some drugs. Um, drugs that work on uh, dopamine or serotonin receptors or things like that. Um, you can feel pretty bummed out the next day because it's just spiking those levels, right? Those feel good drugs. Um, so 5-HTP is something that can work if you can get your hands on it for the depressive effects of alcohol. Now, another thing I wanna talk about um, here, I'll just put it up here. IF, we've been talking all about this, right? Intermittent fasting. One of the best things you can do if you have a shitty day of eating and you drink a bunch of alcohol on 4th of July, um, on Thursday, do not eat until you have fasted for 16 hours. So do an intermittent fast. Actually, the longer the better in this case, right? Try to aim for at least 16 hours. So let's put 16 here. Um, intermittent fast the next day. Let your body clear itself out. Like we talk about autophagy and apoptosis, getting glucose out of the bloodstream, all these things. A, a fast is literally detoxifying the body. That's like what it's doing. So let the body clear itself out. Don't make it focus on digestion. A lot of people do this and it's incorrect. Um, like for me, when I'm hungover, I'm starving. Starving. I can eat enough for 10 people. For some reason, like if I, if I drink a little too much and I have a hangover, I can eat all day. You don't wanna do that. You can do that, but give your body a break. Give it 16 hours at least. Do an intermittent fast. Let it clean out all the junk before you start eating, right? Um, let's see. Gluten, gluten ingredients in beer that have lectins. Uh, no, there are a lot of, remember, grain, uh, gluten is only one lectin. Gluten is only one protein, one thing that contains lectins, right? Whole grains, like we talk about, have every lectin known to man. So there's like gluten, there's galatin, there's WGA. WGA is found in whole grains, the one we talk about that makes people fat. Um, there are countless lectins and grains contain all of them. All of them, it's not just gluten. So like gluten-free beer, still loaded with le lectins. So don't even think about that, right? Um, I'm, gonna talk, I'm gonna get all these questions here and then I just wanna talk about one hack. This is the ultimate hack, right? So if you know tomorrow, you're gonna have a bunch of approved carbohydrates, right? You're gonna have broccoli salad and you're gonna pick out all the blueberries to be a smart ass and you're gonna eat nothing but the blueberries and say, Justin told me I could eat this, right? Because that's what people do. I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. Or you're gonna eat a whole bag of Terra sweet potato chips and then you're gonna eat a whole bag of Terra plantain chips and then you're gonna eat a bunch of nuts and then you're gonna drink seven ciders and just sugar, 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 sugar. Here's the ultimate hack for that. Tomorrow morning, fast, fast leading up to this event that we're gonna do. And we're gonna talk about glycogen. Now, I told you this before, one of my first ever published articles, and I've linked to this on the Clovis blog, was called The Window of Gains, How Donuts Can Help You Grow. And I was basically playing devil's advocate. Now at the bottom, I reverse it and say, look, I recommend things like sweet potatoes, maybe white rice if you have to, if you're a bodybuilder. Not for normal people, don't freak out, right? But I was basically saying that if you can deplete the glycogen stores in your body, deplete your liver glycogen, deplete your muscle glycogen, then if you were to, let's say, uptake uh, glucose, right? If you were to ingest sugar, then it would preferentially be shuttled from insulin into your muscle cells to replenish your glycogen. So you have about 400 grams of glycogen, four to 600 grams, depending on the person, like the rock has more than that, right? But uh, glycogen stored in your muscles. These are stores of glucose that your body needs those if you deplete those glycogen stores, it's going to refill them, 
right? As soon as you eat anything that can be converted to glucose, it's gonna refill those glycogen stores. This is a hack. So if you know you're going to a cookout, you know you're gonna eat sweet potato chips, right? You want to deplete this glycogen. Deplete, okay, as much as you can. So there are a couple ways to do this, and you could go to the gym and do it. You're probably not gonna to go to the gym and do a body by science workout, which is really slow repetition, similar to like the ARX thing. You know, five seconds up, five seconds down. You can do that, you can do that with things like push-ups. You can literally do a five second down squat, count to five, 1,000, come up five, 1,000, and see how many you can do with body weight. You can do that with push-ups, like frog push-ups, five second downs, five seconds up are brutal, right? But I'm gonna tell you the two biggest hacks for depleting glycogen. Number one, let's turn this to number one, is sprints. Now, again, I, I hate to say it this way, but like if you're if you're not if you're significantly overweight, you're not in a place where this is an option for you. Just kind of tune this out. Um, but you, you could try the next option at a lower rep scheme. Um, but if you can deplete your glycogen as much as you can, literally kick your ass tomorrow, right? I never I never tell you to do this. I always talk about aerobic threshold training, taking it easy, not crushing the body, not going high intensity. Go high intensity. If you know you're going to be eating carbohydrates, do the most glycolytic work you can possibly think of. Number one for that is sprints. The best way to do this is 100 meters. Now there's an app on your phone. There are measuring apps on your phone. You can literally pull up, I've done this, you can pull up a map of your neighborhood. So like here's my house, here's the neighbor's house. And I can touch the screen and draw a line like this. And then the app will say, that's 100 meters. So I'm like, oh, I gotta run to my neighbor's mailbox. That's 100 meters, right? You can literally map out your, I can't remember the name of the app. I wish I knew the name of the app. I can't look at my phone because it's recording me right now. But there's an app that can tell you this. So literally just map out 100 meters. You're gonna do 100 meter sprints. That means an all out sprint for 100 meters as hard as you possibly can. Then a one minute rest. After that one minute rest, you're gonna do it again. You're gonna do six of these. Six 100 meter sprints you are going to deplete a tremendous amount of glycogen, then go have at it with the sweet potato chips. Okay, you're gonna be just fine. It's, it's fantastic, it's a really, really good little hack. So number one is sprints. Um, number two, if you wanna deplete, deplete glycogen, is burpees. So this is what I call high rep burpees. And what you wanna want, want do is 25 reps. Now you're gonna to wanna to do 25 reps with really good form. So that means as long as it takes you. Now, some of you probably can't do 25 reps, right? But, so you try to get to 25 reps. Maybe do it for five reps. It depends on your fitness level. You gotta assess that for yourself. I can't assess it unless I'm with you. I know your body fat, your composition, your history, all those things, right? Generally, like if this were me, right? I would do 25 reps of perfect form burpees, and then I would rest for two minutes. And then I would repeat this at least five times. So I'm probably gonna do one of these two things in the morning. I haven't decided which one, but I'm definitely going to do it. I might lift weights, I might do some really heavy lifting and deplete glycogen because I know I'm gonna be eating the crap out of some sweet potato chips because they're amazing, right? So I know I'm gonna be taking in more sugar than I usually do. So I'm gonna make sure that I do something to deplete this glycogen. And that is a little hack. And then that glucose that you eat during the day will be shuttled into your muscle cells instead of your fat cells. This is a hack for avoiding fat gain via carbohydrate overload on a holiday. That's your little hat. So basically, we went over an hour. Jeez, I cannot believe we went over an hour. Um, so that's basically my 4th of July special. How to celebrate Clovis style. These are all the things that I take into consideration when I have cookouts at my parents' house or cookouts at my house or I go do cookouts, whatever, or if I'm on a boat and I'm eating and drinking on a boat, I am definitely known to jump off of a cliff and swim as hard as I can for 10 minutes and then get back in the boat and get back to eating. Like I will do some form of physical activity, right, to deal with that glucose surplus. So um, this is a great little hack, perfect hack. Let's jump into some questions. What do we got here? You guys got questions for me tomorrow? Anything that I touched on that's confusing or? Direct sales. Okay, Laura said I will say, so she's talking about the beauty counter company. Their number one thing is education and they do a lot of lobbying for safe products so they aren't as sleazy as most direct sale companies. That's awesome, super cool. I like hearing that. Um, still wish they sold direct to consumer. That kind of stuff uh, really kind of drives me nuts. Um, that's just me personally as a businessman, bums me out. Um, tried Truly, White Claw, gluten ingredients in beer. We talked about beer and lectins. Uh, Mishka said she does not drink alcohol. Yep, Two Town Cider. For a holiday, I get it, that's correct, Jessica. For a holiday. 
I'm ordering from Amazon. Okay, planning my first 24 hour fast uh, after tomorrow. That's awesome, cool, totally cool. Um, that's a good idea, plus you've been with the pro protocol for quite some time, so the fast really shouldn't be difficult for you. Um, that said, uh, I saw this challenge coming up for a fast after 4th of July. The only thing I will say to you is if you go crazy on the carbohydrates, that fast is gonna suck real bad. You're gonna be real hungry, real hungry. So I would try to do a low carb 4th of July as much as you can, um, or wait a day and maybe do the fast on Friday. Because I'm telling you, if, if you go crazy and even something like sweet potato chips or you eat a bowl of fruit salad or whatever, or you have a couple ciders, like if you go real crazy on the sugar that fast, you're gonna make it way harder on yourself. And if it's the first time you've attempted it, it's gonna stick in your brain as fasting sucks. See what I mean? So you wanna increase the chance of success, increase the compliance rate for this. Um, that's what I would try to do if I were you. Um, so yeah, yeah, if you're gonna go crazy on carbohydrates or even go a little bit overboard on carbohydrates, you're, gonna, you're just gonna make it harder on yourself, for sure. So uh, just something to think about because you're gonna be spiking your blood sugar levels and spiking your insulin levels, so those are gonna have to get back down to a normal level when you begin that fast and hunger is going to kick in. Right? So the higher your blood glucose, the higher your insulin, when you begin a fast, the more hunger issues you're gonna have. I'm eating pretty low carb, I'll have a few drinks. Yeah, I mean, you, you might be okay with a few drinks. Um, you could always try it. I mean, I'm not saying don't try it. Um, just saying it might be a little harder on yourself for the first one, you know? You get the rest of your life to fast. You don't need to necessarily force the issue. Um, Friday, try it Friday, try it Saturday, try it Sunday. Um, or just play it by ear tomorrow. If you literally have two drinks and eat low carb, go for it on Thursday, for sure. But just, just remember what I'm telling you here is if you do go overboard on carbs tomorrow, the fast is gonna be difficult. So uh, just something to keep in mind there. Um, what else we got? Sam, myself, and a few others are starting after dinner on the 5th. Does that sound like a solid plan? Yeah, sounds like a great plan. So you're talking uh, Thursday dinner to Friday dinner. I love that plan. I think it's great. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so that way you have some recovery time. So I would do, uh, you know, have the 4th of July, let it be what it may, try to make good decisions like we talked about today. And then um, Thursday, hit your macros. Leading up to dinner, hit your macros. Um, so hit the macros, and then if it if it ends up being 5 p.m., 6 p.m., whatever, hit that start fasting button on the Zero app and do your 24 into Friday. That's a great idea, especially if you have a couple drinks on Wednesday, um, just to mitigate the damage of that, the cellular damage that's going to come from alcohol. Alcohol is never gonna be good for you. None of these products that I'm telling you about are good for you. They're just not as bad for you as other ones that are just straight poison, right? Um, any other questions we got? Got it. I already have after my 24 meal picked out. Yeah, that's awesome. Fantastic. Uh, don't be surprised too if after 24 hours you get full really quickly. Um, you might find that with the first meal back that you feel really, really full. And it's kind of intense to eat. Um, holy crap, it's so hot in here. It's way too hot. This is crazy. Um, what else we got? I'll try it that way also. Yeah, that's a great idea. Susanna, I think that's a, a fantastic idea. I'm, sitting, I'm standing here in tree pose. You guys don't know it, but I'm doing this podcast in tree pose because it feels good. My hips, for some reason, are bugging me today. Um, so, tree pro, tree pose, AMA. Let's do this. Mm. What else do you guys want? I really struggle hitting my macros after 16.8 or 18.6. Yes, that's true. It's going to be a little bit tricky, for sure. Um, so full, so quickly, yeah. But remember, you have all that time, right? So you have, the, uh, you have an eight-hour window. You have a six-hour window, whatever, right? So if you just make sure, like if you're doing, um, you know, you can set it up and just say, I'm going to eat every two hours. Like, I started a fast tonight at 7 p.m. So I'm not gonna eat tomorrow till 11 a.m., right? So I stopped eating at 7 p.m. So at like 7.15, I'd eaten salmon and a bunch of broccoli. Now, I wasn't close to hitting my macros, so I made a smoothie with a bunch of collagen protein that had 30 plus grams of protein, and I just chugged it down in liquid form, so it's like, I'm, and I felt really, really full before I got into this AMA, but you know, I'll be fine until 11 o'clock tomorrow, no problem. Um, and I'll probably just continue the fast. I'm going to a cookout at my dad's house at one o'clock, right? So I'm probably going to do some kind of glycogen depleting workout in the morning, head over to dad's house, feast, have a great time, and not worry about anything. It's gonna be awesome. Yay, tree pose, yes, tree pose. Um, all right, uh, what else you guys wanna talk about? Any other questions? Sorry that I'm sweating for you here. I had post-workout powder to hit my numbers because I was so full. Yes. That is what those paleo powders are super convenient for. They're awesome. I do that a lot too. Um, if, I'm, if I'm far off from my macros, I'll take something like digest and rest or post-workout at the end of the night because those are the caffeine-free formulas. So fat loss and pre-workout both have caffeine, uh, digest and rest, and um, post-workout do not have caffeine. So I'll use those a lot in like, 
you know, evening time smoothies. I usually don't finish the day with a giant, giant meal. I usually finish the day with like a bunch of kale and um, a bunch of kale, maybe a little bit of stevia. I throw some apple cider vinegar. I throw a tablespoon of raw cacao powder and like one scoop of post-workout and then two full scoops of raw collagen powder. So it's like a little bit sweet, tastes pretty good. I get some veggies in there. Um, just really simple smoothies, you know. I usually end the day with something like that, some kind of liquid calories. And by adding the veggies in there and adding the post-workout in there, I get a little bit of glucose in my system, which actually helps deep sleep at night. Um, I don't tell people that a lot because I don't want people to just go slamming like tablespoons of honey before bed or anything like that. Um, waiting for mine to arrive, I didn't realize how much I'd miss it with the little gap yet. Is that just and rest a good way to finish off the day on macros? Yes, exactly, that's what we were just talking about. Um, fantastic way, absolutely. Um, so I really, really like adding digest and rest, um, and sometimes I'll do digest and rest in two full scoops of collagen powder, so I'm ending up with like 35 grams of protein, and uh, you know, I mean, literally I take a full Nutribullet bullet thing and like fill it with kale, right? Like I just put a ton of frozen kale, and I'll throw a scoop of post-workout, two scoops of collagen, a little bit of stevia, apple cider vinegar, um, cacao, uh, raw cacao, whatever I want to throw in there, it's awesome. I was doing some herbs and seasonings, like some Ayurvedic herbs and seasoning, I'm always using the powders to hit my macros. Awesome, I love hearing that, that's fantastic. Hit your macros with the powders, excellent idea. Um, also, yeah, don't forget guys, if you've ever bought from the store before, you got loyalty points today. You should have an email in your inbox. Uh, shouldn't have gone to your spam folder because you've shopped in the store before. Check those loyalty points. Like, if it came through and said you have 1,300 loyalty points, you have $13 to use in the store. Um, and you can get on the website and just scroll down to the bottom of the website, you'll see a little circle like this. That's what the circle looks like. It's basically perfect. And it says something like sign in. <laughs> That's what it looks like. It says sign in or something. Go down there and click. On the right side, there's a little help chat thing. On the left side, there's a little thing where you can sign in to log in and see what your point balance is and see how to earn points and all the different ways you can earn points and spending them in the store, blah, blah, blah. Um, also, I had a question about this, the bundles. So I used to offer bundle pricing on the store. Now, I pulled the bundle pricing on individual products and turned them into their own products. So if you go to the homepage, you're gonna see normal paleo powder, then you're gonna see bundles. The bundles are preloaded in certain combinations and you can select the flavor for each one and they're actual bundles. So it's sold as one product and one SKU. So even though it's two bags, it's sold as one product instead of the mix and match um, bundles now, okay? Um, what else we got? works on computer but not iPad. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out the loyalty program thing. Um, all of these Shopify loyalty programs appear to not be working on, they appear to not be mobile responsive. Um, so that's something I need to reach out to Shopify about. I think that it's just severely lacking on their part. I run my store on the Shopify platform, so there's not a whole lot I can do about that unless I was gonna go in and um, custom code it which I could do, I know a little bit about code. Um, stuff gets a little tricky. So um, yeah, let me, let me jump on that, I'll figure out, I'll research um, the company that I use for loyalty points now, I'll ask them about the mobile thing. Um, but don't be afraid, I mean like, your customer account, so like you have a customer account, right? If you log into your customer account, it doesn't matter if you join the loyalty program. You don't have to join, this isn't joining, right? Like don't even worry about this, you don't have to click on it, whatever, you're making purchases, you're getting points, 100%. So you go on desktop and go into your account, you'll see how many points you have earned lifetime. And I just back credited every single order for the last six months. So I literally just, I literally took a big bag of money. I can tell you how much money it is. I will tell you right now, it's in the thousands. <laughs> I literally took a big bag of money and threw it at all of you. I said, ah, here you go. That's just what I decided to do. It was easier than what the other alternative, which was to strip away all your points, load you into a new program and say, hey, I'm really sorry, I took your points away, blah, 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 but I didn't load in the balance the way that I should have, user error, and I just said, screw it, I'm gonna double all your points. Uh, it's gonna cost me thousands of dollars. You're welcome. Uh, what else are we gonna talk about? My email did go to junk folder, just found it, awesome, cool. Yeah, and again, even if you don't get the email or don't open the email, the points are still there, it's just, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to reply to the email. The email is just me saying, hey, what's up? It's Justin. I gave you some points for this new program. You get the points no matter what, right? Just gave it to you guys. That's what I do. That's how I do things. I'm really a terrible businessman. Can we just be honest about that? I really just don't understand this whole money situation. It's terrible. <laughs> I should probably try to focus on you guys giving me money, but I kind of suck at that. So moving on, uh, what else we got? 
We're running out of questions. I hope you guys have a happy fourth tomorrow. Really, I hope you have a fantastic time. Relax, spend some time with your family. I know I'll be up in the morning in my sauna. I'll be doing a glycogen depletion work, depleting workout. I'll be in the ice cold showers. It'll be great. You're doing hot yoga. Yes, right now I am. This light is cooking me to death. It's ridiculous. Um, so I have an off topic question because I'm late and catching up on old AMAs. You talked about fruits not having the same nutrients as they did 50 years ago. You compared a banana to equal amount of broccoli. So vegetables become less nutritious over time like fruit has. Yes, they absolutely have. Anything that is grown in soil has become ridiculously less nutrient dense. And even still, the, the chart that I did that was on Instagram and all those things, that's based on 2018 numbers, right? So I'm taking the nutrition facts from 2018. Um, I don't know if this exists somewhere where I could find the, do the same comparison on a banana from the 50s and broccoli from the 50s, but those numbers wouldn't change. It wouldn't be, like, vegetables have always been astronomically more nutrient dense than fruit. So even though the fruit is definitely winning out big time now, it was still winning out then. It's just, like, like I said, the banana that I compared, that banana on a chart, that doesn't exist in nature, anywhere in nature. It does not exist. That's a fake thing. It can't exist in nature without human intervention, right? Bananas that we eat don't even have seeds. They cannot reproduce. They are not a real thing found in nature. So that's the thing. Like if you buy a non-GMO banana and you think you're eating a non-GMO banana, you, I don't want to call you a name right now or insult your intelligence, but that doesn't exist in nature. How did it get here? It's like a chihuahua or a poodle, right? That poodle at some point was a wolf. All dogs come from wolves. Right? So it's these dogs that the dog that you have on your couch right now, I guarantee you, is a genetically modified dog. Right? It has been bred through generations to look like the cute little thing that is on your your couch. And what it is with animals is if you could measure IQ in an animal, that animal is one one thousand it's a thousand times dumber than the wolf that it comes from. Like the intelligence level of these animals is ridiculous because we've just destroyed them through this breeding, right? They're not anything like their original thing. It's the same thing with the banana, same things with fruit. All these things have been genetically modified over time. So just understand like you're always, 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 always eating genetically modified at some point or another. These, these fruits were bred to be bigger, to have more fructose, to have less fiber purposefully. They bred them purposefully to have less fiber. It's ridiculous, crazy. Happy fourth, yes, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Marnie, Jackie, <laughs> Big Heart, Small Pockets. <sighs> I don't know how I feel about that comment, Jackie. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> I gotta recover from that one. You have a very good point. <laughs> Thanks, happy Independence Day. Thank you, Mishka. Uh, Mary Elizabeth, makes total sense. And my bulldog is growling at you. That's a dumb dog. That's a dumb ass dog. Cute as hell, I love bulldogs, but good lord are they stupid. <laughs> but they're great dogs, awesome dogs. Crazy sad, I know, right? Um, Jacqueline Smith, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the thing about dogs too. Like, There's a reason why canine units are German Shepherds. They're less far removed from, you, you know? Maybe we, maybe we need a pet AMA, it's crazy. Everyone's always on me for a pet AMA. Maybe we'll have to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. No, I appreciate it, Jackie. I know that was a, that was a compliment, I know, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, all right, guys, let's wrap this one up. Let's call it an early night. I'm sure everyone's getting up early early in the morning. Maybe some of you are traveling. Be safe traveling. Make good decisions. White Claw, Truly, Cider if you need to, have one. You know, broccoli salad, sweet potato chips, plantains. This is one of those things, right, where I don't understand people that aren't paleo anymore. Like, I don't get it. I don't understand this idea of like, well, what, people ask me that all the time. You can't have bread? You don't eat sugar? Well, what the heck do you eat? And I'm like, literally everything that is real food from nature. And it's all delicious. It's insanely good, right? Like, if I take pictures of my normal plates of food every day, people are just like, oh my God, dude, that looks so good. That looks so good. Yeah, your picture of your Hot Pocket doesn't entice me at all. Not even a little bit. Shit's gross. Get it out of my face. You hand me a Hot Pocket, you about to get slapped in the face with a Hot Pocket. You ever been slapped in the face with a Hot Pocket before? Hand me a Hot Pocket, see what happens. <laughs> Guys, I'm getting delirious from the heat. I'm talking about slapping people with Hot Pockets. What's happening here? What's happening in this AMA, right? <laughs> Kristen would be very happy about a pet AMA. Yep, happy fourth. Fruit is what my friends freak out about. Yeah, but the thing is, your friends, I love your friends. I've never even met them. I love them. 
they're, they're not educated on the topic. They're just not. There's literally zero argument here. There's literally zero argument. Like I told you guys this, that uh, an apple found in the wild compared to a golden delicious apple found in the grocery store, 47,500% more nutrients. 47,500%. You'd have to eat 475 apples to, uh, to get the nutrients in one wild apple found in nature. It's impossible to argue. It's impossible to debate. It's like I said, sometimes people try to debate with me and I will actually shut it down. I will say, we're not having this conversation because it's like a liberal trying to convert a conservative or a conservative trying to convert a liberal. If you have decided in your head that fruit is a health food, there's nothing I can do for you. Um, that's another thing. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, you change Todd's mind and like, yes, and Todd is awesome. I love it. And I love that Todd was a skeptic and no longer is like, because I always talk about learn, unlearn, relearn. Todd is an example of the kind of person that I love. That's awesome. Right? Like, I have been wrong in my life about so much shit, it's not even funny. But when I was presented with irrefutable evidence, I changed my mind. Learn, unlearn, relearn. That's the important thing. If I have one more personal trainer who just insists that yellow bananas are a health food, I'm going to triangle choke them with my legs until they are unconscious. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to say, my body works better than yours, you dummy. <laughs> it's, it's like, I don't even know what to do at this point. It's, it's crazy. It's craziness, right? Um, all right, what else we got here? Change Todd's mind. Love me some real food. Friends freak out about fruit. Yes, fruit. Okay. Um, what do you think, guys? You want to wrap it up? I love hanging here. I love hanging. I just want to hang out and chat with you guys. But then I start talking about slapping people with Hot Pockets and triangle talking people. You can't do that. It's not allowed. It's just not allowed. <laughs> All right, uh, guys, thank you so much. All right, let's start wrapping it up. This is AMA number 26 with my cool Block Island, Block Island, Rhode Island, American flag shirt. Um, I just realized that I'm sweaty in a tank top on Facebook Live. Yeah, this is, this is probably shutdown time, right? This, uh, is this illegal or something? I don't know. <laughs> You are the best, and we all love you for being so good to us. I love you, Carla. Also, uh, I sent you a comment. Let me know which email you want me. I'm gonna merge all your points for you, the loyalty program. I was just teasing you this morning on the video. I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna merge all your points. If you have two accounts with two, two points, you just need to let me know which email you want me to use. Send me a message, boom, I'll blend them for you. You're all set. Hashtag real life. Yes, Jackie, I love you. Marnie, thank you, awesome. Happy fourth, guys. Please be safe, please be safe, please be safe. Don't do anything stupid. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say don't do anything I wouldn't do because I have done way too many dumb things in my life. Just have fun, spend it with your family. Don't freak about this stuff, please. Like the, like the fasting and thing, don't freak out. Don't track every little thing. Don't just think, make conscious decisions. Don't obsess, don't ruin your day. Don't shit in the punch bowl, okay? It's the biggest thing with holidays. Don't shit in the punch bowl. Just do your thing. You don't owe an explanation to anybody. You don't have to tell anybody why you're drinking a seltzer water. You don't owe them that. Just do you, be happy, spend the time with your family, love, don't judge, have an amazing day, be safe. Happy 4th of July, I love you guys so much. It is great to be an American, it really is. That is taboo to say these days apparently and it seems cheesy but like, I run a company, I've transformed most of your lives and I've done it from my living room on an iPhone, on a platform called Facebook that's free. And I can stand here in an American flag t-shirt, sleeveless, and talk to you like you're in my living room, and I can literally change your life, and I can change the life of every single person that you love, and I can do it for free. Pretty amazing, right? Think about that. Let me leave you with that. So, happy 4th of July. You guys are awesome. Thank you for letting me live my dream. I hope that I have given you valuable information tonight. If you liked it, please yep, click the like button, share, share this on your wall, share it to your people. Thank you guys so much. Um, take some videos, have some fun, share some things in the academy, throw some stuff out there. Um, dry farm wine, yeah, that's true, dry farm wines. If you have dry farm wines in your house, that's a go-to. Come to my house, I have 24 bottles of it. Let's, let's have a dry farm wine party, all right? Thank you guys so much, AMA number 26, 4th of July special, how to celebrate Clovis style. Do it tomorrow, put your Clovis pants on, have a great time, happy 4th of July, have fun with your family, and love everyone, okay? See you guys, good night.